Good to see everyone that's here. Thank you for making a sacrifice. Turn your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Samuel. We'll be going to chapter 26 once again on this particular Wednesday. Uh, this is uh, our opportunity uh, to serve uh, the Lord God Almighty once again with our midweek Bible study. This is Wednesday, June the 27th, 2018. Our series, The Kings of Israel and Judah. Tonight we'll be discussing David flees to seek refuge among the Philistines. David flees to seek refuge among the Philistines. We'll be dealing with chapters 26 and 27. And uh, we will see and take note of this that at this particular time, understanding and study, that you don't want someone to run you away from God to where you end up being in the enemy's territory. The Israelites have never been friends with the Philistines. This is like uh, taking a journey to a Baptist or a Methodist church or maybe going to uh, hide out with the Dalai Lama or something to that effect. And so David has got to do a lot of trickery when he gets there in order for him to comprehend that he has to convince them he's really with them without wanting to attack uh, those uh, of Judah. And so we see in uh, the 26th chapter of 1 Samuel it says in uh, beginning at verse 1, we kind of talked a little bit about these verses and uh, we were trying to deal with uh, the thought is that David appears to be in good standings with Saul when we get uh, to the end of the 24th chapter, but we find out that these Ziphites, as we pointed out, we took a few verses out of here in a previous lesson, uh, stirred up Saul's heart against David. And uh, one of the things I want to point out to you is that do not surround yourself in an area of the Ziphites, and I'm using it metaphorically, uh, people who will stir up trouble between you and those that you are trying to uh, befriend or trying to keep in alliance with that God does not disapprove of and therefore if you hang around the Ziphites they're going to go and stir the person's heart up against you and that's what you want to make sure you don't do that remember these are life lessons seen through other people's life uh, we can look at authority we can look at uh, brotherhood we can look at the worship we can look at the enemy all within the book of kings the book of kings isn't written just for historical value there's life lessons saturated throughout it so verse 1 of first Samuel 26 and the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeah now see they come to him he didn't call for them saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hachela, which is before Jeshimon? Now see, he, he doesn't know that. He's given up on bothering the guy. He's trying to conduct himself in an appropriate fashion. And they stir him up. This is what they'll do for you. Someone you're having difficulties with uh, that is trying to come against you and, and you're, they've forgiven you and you break free. Then the Ziphites stir it up. Then Saul rose, verse 2, and went down to the wilderness of Ziph, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul pitched in the hill of Hachela, which is before Jeshimon, by the way, but David abode in the wilderness, and he saw that Saul came after him into the wilderness. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deed. And David rose and came to the place where Saul had pitched. And David beheld the place where Saul lay and Abner the son of Ner, the captain of his host. And Saul lay in the trench and the people pitched round about him. So they, so they, so they got the tents. They circling the king, trying to protect him. And uh, verse 6, then answered David and said to Ahimelech the Hittite. And to Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, brother to Joab, saying, Who will go down with me to Saul, to the camp? And Abishai said, I will go down with thee. Verse 7, So David and Abishai came to the people by night, and Saul lay sleeping within the trench, and his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. And Abner and the people lay round about him. So, Abner is his right hand man. He's his number one boy. He's, he's responsible at the top of the food chain for Saul's life. And we're going to see how David is going to 
show that he's not a good protector of Saul. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we're going to see also that the other people circle him and he's in a trench. So, so they got Saul pretty well protected. If you do get attacked, all they got to do is lay low. They won't even know where he at. He, could, he can be taken to safety because you don't want the king to be slain. And the idea is that he says, and David uh, said to Abishai, uh, oh, that, oh, let's go back up. We're going to look at verse 8. Because this is where it gets, where you and I must understand. If you are trying to connect with a Saul, and what is the description of a Saul? It could be a saint uh, that is coming after you. One minute they're calm and peaceful. And the next minute they rise and they throw a jab. You can't fix it. The more you act holy, the more they fear. So you got to watch the people stirring them up against you. And then you have to watch your camp stirring you up against a person. And we're talking about when you're trying, this is the key, you're trying not to destroy this person that wants to destroy you. Your purpose is a valid one, and in this case it's holy. Because of the fact is, is that David is fearful to put his hand against the Lord's anointing. So David is like walking on eggshells, so to speak. You've got enemies outside of Israel that hate his guts because David has slaughtered so many Philistines, man, it's, 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 it's horrible. So what does he do? At this point now, Abishai, as were well, the sons of Zeruel, always want to kill somebody that was against David. That's a drop of a hat. They wanted to kill Shimei. Let me cut this dog, you know, this uncircumcised dog, you know, this guy that's killing. And David always has to fight with the sons of Israel, calm down, we're not doing this. So now, Abishai in verse 8 said to David, God hath delivered thine enemy into thine hand this day. Now therefore let me smite him, I pray thee, with the spear even to the earth at once, and I will not smite him the second time. So Abishai said, I'm going I'm to get a clean hit. I ain't going to chop him up, I'm going to fuck him. I got him, you know. So he says, uh, and David said to Abishai, destroy him not. For who can stretch forth his hand against the Lord's anointing and be guiltless? David said furthermore, as the Lord liveth, the Lord shall smite him. Now listen, now see saints, now listen what he's saying. Now, you know, when you look at this brethren and, and listeners, wherever you may be, you think David is a criminal, like a bad guy, but he isn't. David has seen Saul at the drop of a commandment kill the whole city of Nob, which is a pre-city. Uh, uh, these are the types of things that David's mind and heart will encounter in his battling with Saul. Saul is not a good guy. But David knows he's the Lord's anointed. You know, man, if I can't do that because of his respect for the Lord, Saul is ex out. He's a loser. But because of his respect for the Lord. So your respect for the Lord is what you utilize when people are like a Saul. They're one minute they're in your face with hugs and love, then they attack you, throw a javelin. And then you show why I could have got you and they say, oh, you're better than me, I love you. And then all of a sudden, the Ziphites come stir up again and they're after you again. So Abisha said, man, we got him now. And Abisha makes a scriptural statement. The Lord has delivered your enemy into your hand. This is true. But David says, who can stretch forth his hand? But he said, God's going to kill him. He didn't say God's going to punish him. Listen, saints. He says, God's going to kill him. See, David knows Saul deserves to die. He knows. He's evil. Saints, when you kill, when you kill the priest, an innocent priest, Amen. you are exed out for life. This guy's crazy. Even his own soldiers, one group said, man, we're not, we not killing no priest. Man, forget that. You kill us if you want. I mean, that's what there was left for them. But he doesn't bother because he knows he's wrong. And so now he has to battle with his own camp egging him on. Rightfully so, but because he's a Lord's anointing, he can't do it. And so that's how you have got to understand. When you're dealing with a saint, you've got to deal with a saint differently. And brethren, I love you. I have to tell you this. While I got out in my lives, while we're still working together as a unit, you got to handle lost children differently. No matter how evil the lost children were, they were always special to him. In the sense of how you handle them. You have to wait patient until he say, I got it. He sent a prophet. I got this. Stand down. I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle it. Because the Lord knows I can take him out. Now if I want you to kill him, I'll tell you. But you got to wait for me. And because he is holy and separate. But the Lord don't like him at all. But he's saying, are you going to let me tell you when to kill him? 
See, that's a test for David. David has to understand, you know, the law to get him. So he says this. In, 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 the, in the verse that we're reading, he says that the Lord shall smite him. Verse 10. He says several different ways. Three ways he can die. Or his day shall come to die. Like he'll just get old. Or he shall descend into battle and perish. But David know either God going to get him or the enemy going to get him or he going to just die. But David isn't going oh that he may live because David know he's no good. This is the kind of guy got to die for it to be peace. So verse 10 he says uh, verse 11 forgive me. The Lord forbid that I should stretch forth my hand against the Lord's anointing. But I pray thee take now the, the spear that is at his bolster and the cruise of water and let us go. Now David's going to make a point. Remember he cut the bottom of his garment. Now he's going to make a point. I could have got you. twice I could have got you. Uh, so David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster and they got them away. And no man saw it nor knew it. Watch why. Neither awake for they were all asleep. Watch this. Because a deep sleep from the law was fought upon them. Now guess what? The writer of Samuel is telling us this. David don't know that. David just know they sleep. So you got to know when we're reading this, who's talking. Who's, see, this is, this is a narrative that's going on. So as you and I are reading it, unless it says the law said this, it is a narrative of what happened. But this is a statement that David does not say. The Lord had fallen a deep sleep on him. No, he didn't say that. The narrator is telling us. The Holy Spirit is keeping record. And he's saying why they didn't wake up. Man, they watching for the king. You crack a leaf or step on a twig, man. Everybody finna leap up. You, why is the watch? Why is the watch, saints? Every army has a watch. God has caused a deep sleep to hit. Because he wants to show Saul, I could have killed you so many times at David's hand, but he's more noble than you. And, and Saul always chimes in the speech, I know this, but he's still not glad right now. You know, brother, just hearing you talk, I was, I was just thinking about uh, the scripture that talks about the vengeance of the Lord, mm -hmm. how we need to wait on God yes, before amen. we try to take uh, control of a situation, whether it be Christian or non-Christian, right. we have to uh, wait on the Lord. As, exactly. as he says, the vengeance of mine. Yeah. You don't have to amen. go and, and uh, try to get at your enemy. That's right. Um, that's just right. if you you play your cards right, if I can use that that yes, term. Yes, if exactly. you play your cards right, God is on your side. You know, you know yeah. as you as you continue to worship Him and be a part of His kingdom, that's He's right. gonna be on your side. You that's know, right. and and we don't know what's in front of us, and we don't know why we 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 get tested by enemies and and Christians and non Christians. We don't know that, that's but right. then going through what we go through mm -hmm. every each and every day, uh, it could be something. Um, God is is getting us ready for, or He's bringing us out of, or what have you the case, whatever the case may be. We ourselves just need to be ready. As David here and his army, they're ready. His army is ready to fight. You know, David is ready to fight, but he's knowing, uh, uh, this ain't the time. This this is not the time for us to strike. But then remembering that all vengeance belongs to God. No matter how how a person treat you, all it, it reminds me when I was working with the school how the the, the cafeteria staff, you know, uh, I could have lashed out many a times. I could have dropped my cloth and been just like them and did just what they were doing, tit for tat, tit for tat. But then knowing that God is with me and I'm with God and I worship a different God than you do, I know that I don't need to strike at you. Just like David, let's not strike right now because we don't know what God has in store for us for not striking. That's the truth. Well said, sister. God bless anybody else have a comment. Uh, because the, it, as the sister said, you know, let God handle it. Because he handle it. You be kind to them. Give your enemies bread and water. Be kind to them. Protect yourself. Don't instigate. Don't start. But run when you can. But you got to know that the Lord has to do something. You you won't have a life, you know. And so he says here, uh, thank you, sis, for the comment. It says in uh, verse 11, uh, forgive me, verse uh, number uh, 13. And he says, uh, The David went over to the other side and stood on the top of a hill afar off, a great space between them. And David cried to the people and to Abner, the son of Ner, saying, Answerest thou not, Abner? Then Abner answered and said, Who art thou that cries to the king? And David said to Abner, Art not thou a valiant man? And who is like to thee in Israel? So he said, You know, Abner, 
You're the baddest boy out there because that's why he got you. You're a valued man, aren't you? He's been, he's been, he's been embarrassing. He says, Wherefore then hast thou not kept thy law of the king? For there came one of the people in to destroy the king, the Lord, thy Lord. This is not good that thou hast done as the Lord liveth. You are worthy to die because you have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. Now see where the king's spear is and the cruise of water that was at his boast. I want to tell you something about Abner, which we'll find out in previous lessons when we get to them. Abner's going to die. Joab's going to take him out. But Abner's going to die, David says, like a fool. See, but when he says it here, he's meaning it. You deserve to die because we could have killed the king. We got to understand something, saints, about God. If you deserve to die and you don't repent, he's going to get you here. See, we really got to understand you can do some stuff that if your heart doesn't clean itself of what you've done, you going to get to God. Second thing is, he definitely going to get us in hell. The reason being is because God complained about the teachers to Israel. I was talking to Brother Robert Polk today. One of the things he reminded me of is that God told them, I'm going to destroy you because you address the people's error as a light thing. Like it wasn't nothing. See, when you talk about what somebody done, Jude taught us in his writing, make a difference. Know the person that needs correcting. Okay, you get angry, you know, too much. Uh, but I don't cuss them out. Yeah, but you get angry too much. Any little thing, you get angry. See, that's why it's becoming a sin. Because you get angry too much. There's a time to get angry and sin now, but you get angry too much. Now, the other one over here, you get angry and sin not. You bust a man in the head with a bat because he accidentally hit your car with his car door. See, now, we got to pull you out the fire. You're on your way to hell because you could have killed that guy. It's a difference. But you got to make a difference. And the problem is, is that God knows how to make a difference to know, I need to kill this one here. But I'm going to kill him when I get old. That's what he did with Shimia. Uh, I mean, God just doesn't forget, saints. And you and I have to help people know you need to get baptized. Because we know you done done something to go to hell. If you're an adult, a young adult, you mean a young adult, we can look in your, your height, all you, yeah, you done done something to go to hell. We already know. People your age always do something to go to hell. You drop dead right now, you're going to die lost. Because we know. But in addition, because see, they can hear, they have ear to hear. You would look at a four-year-old, yeah, you done done something to go to hell. Because see, you don't have ear to hear. Some four-year-olds may, but the most of them don't. So we have to understand is that God will judge that heart because I don't have ear to hear. But the one that's got an ear to hear, you'll know. You got an ear to hear? Yeah. You done done some sin to go to hell. Now, if you can't understand and comprehend the gospel, your question is still there, okay, God has given you grace. See, wherever you're there, once you start to feel that need, you come forward, you know, yeah, you better come on with it. Why? Because God, saints, we have to understand, God hates sin. And if it isn't repented, brethren, we can't live with him. Even a liar can't stay in the presence of God. He can't stay. And you and I are going to have to make sure what has to be taught in a heavy way, teach it heavy. Don't make it light. Because God says, I'm going to hold you a cup for the blood because you made it a light thing. You know? Or you cut, you cut her in the stomach. Well, you know, well, you know. At least you didn't kill her, but you know, that's not a light thing, man. You cut somebody in the stomach, what are you? Some type of maniac, you're trying to kill somebody? That's not a light thing. That's not a light thing to do, you know? And we have to understand those things. So therefore, let's look at this thought. And so he says, you know, you haven't done your job, you know. You didn't have your business right. And so he says, it's not good. And Psalm knew, verse 17, David's voice, he said, is this thy voice, my son David? Oh, he's a son now. See, oh boy. And David said, It is my voice, my Lord, O king. And he said, Wherefore doth my Lord thus pursue out this servant? For what have I done, or what evil is in my hand? Now therefore I pray thee, let my Lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up against me, let him accept an offering. He said, The Lord has brought you to me, then I'm going to bring an offering to the Lord, and then we're going to have peace. But if they be the children of men, Who's that? Ziphites. Remember? 
who got Saul way out of his area in the land of Ziph, the Ziphite. So David know David knows. I know the Lord didn't send you over here to give me because I've done nothing to you. He says, but he gives him option of thinking. He says, but if his children men, this will be the Ziphites, curse be they before the Lord. Now see, now watch this. Now saints, I want you to remember something. Remember, a curse without cause will have no effect. The Ziphites going to be cursed. You know why? Because they have started this mess. Now brother, I want you to bring this on home to your heart. I'm going to bring it to mind. Everybody listening, bring it to theirs. When you stir up mess and you stir up drama that is not founded a curse will fall on you you gotta understand what a curse is because it's, it, 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 it says trouble whatever that trouble gonna be to the Ziphites is gonna hit because David is a prophet he's a king he's gonna foretell things and if David says you curse you curse his wife Michal or Michael someone may pronounce it when David is gonna bring that ark into the city and dance with all his might, with his linen clothes on. Look, the guy's a nice looking guy and he's dancing. The virgins are looking. But she's judging their heart. To say they like the way he looked. But that's in her mind. But as he dances around, when, she come, when he come in, she got something to tell him. Oh, the king, he really dancing for the girl. You know, basically for the girl today. All oh, the virgins looked at the king today. And he danced, you know, and called him Va. And he said, I was dancing because of the Lord. Because this day, that's peace to city. This, my city is blessed because the ark is here. Mm. And we're going to be blessed forever. And now we have done what we said we was going to do. He said, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to be even more vile next time. Mm. Meaning I'm going to praise him even more. Right. And the virgin looking at him, look. He says, but he says, those virgins you're talking about. In essence, I'm paraphrasing. He says, that's who's going to be able to have my children. She can't have no babies, the Bible says, and she was childless. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. See, you judge my heart. David is saying, you judge my heart. So you don't get to have no babies. No babies. Guess what? That means even if one of my bed chamber men, the eunuchs, or whatever, touch you, you ain't going to get pregnant. You can't have no children. See, now for an Israelite woman, that was sorry because, remember, everybody wanted to have the child Jesus. So, see, she, she's cursed. Now, does that always hit like that? We know God has mercy, but people need to understand. Remember, watch what you say against the Lord's anointed. That's why David is walking on eggshells around Saul. Because you know, man, I believe God will handle his business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, with your statement you're making, made me think of uh, Proverbs chapter 6. Okay. Uh, with the things that God hates, and that's starting at verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Ye seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devised wicked um, imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, wow. and he that soweth discard among his brothers. Yes. And, and that's uh, basically seven what you're things, saying. Right? Yeah, seven, uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. I was just reading from verse 16 through 19. Mm -hmm. uh, the, thing, the six things that God hates, yes, seven are an abomination unto him. As you were saying, you know, you have to watch what you say against yes. God or none it. You bring it you bring it about discard. You bringing that's things right. into to uh into presence that's not there. It's causing uh a distraction that's from, right. from God's anointing. He's praising God mm -hmm. because of the ark being there, but then you're finding another reason, you know, uh making it be evil when it's good for God's sake. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well said something. You know, I don't think this one false witness I don't think people know what false witness really impacts. False witness, you know, if let's just take a moment, because we talking about life lesson, this is the way it's gonna be. If I think if I think Keith is well, I ain't gonna just call him nobody. If I think anybody, I don't know why I think Craig's this brother's holy. If anybody I think about person A B C is uh let's say A B C is robbing liquor stores at night, I think. They come out the liquor store. But I don't know that, you know, they come out there fast because they leave in a liquor store. They got a part-time job stuck in the back. And they got to go to their job. They come out there fast. And they rob, he got another liquor store, but it's a chain liquor store. And I think, think he's robbing a liquor store. It doesn't matter if I'm wrong. I am a false witness. Because whoever I tell, it is false. Or I know I thought, that's why. 
two or more witnesses, let a thing be established, and then, you know what that means? I can talk about it. But you know who I need to go talk about it with first? You. I shouldn't even approach you. If I say ABC, Rob Lincoln stuff, oh man, I don't believe that. I'm not waiting for my two wheels. I'm taking it to three. Two or three wheels. I'm taking it all the way to three. Okay. And then on the third, I go, are you robbing nickel stores? I'm a false witness if I say you're robbing nickel stores. Now, there are reports from the House of Court. Understood. First Corinthians 5. I understand. I'm talking about your eyes, what you think you see. See, a false witness. An individual has to understand that's a thing the Lord hates. It's in the Bible. The sister just read it. Better make sure you lock down on that thought. If you'd like to go to hell, do one of those seven things. That's all you got to do. And your ticket's punched. There'll be a seat waiting for you with your name on it. Metaphorically. Because you don't want to live like that. Don't nobody want to hear, I didn't know, I just thought. And then you have people do stuff like this. You know, this, and this, now here's another thing. Yeah, yeah. I say ABC, Rob Liquor Stores. <laughs> and then... JFK go up to ABC and say, are you giving them reasons why they should think you're robbing liquor store? Why would you even ask something stupid like that? But why would you ask something stupid like that if the actions have been repeated, these are not the actions of a man robbing a liquor store? So why would you even ask them that? If the actions have been bad, they were this is what I do. And you go, does that look like somebody robbing the store to you? See, these are people that don't know how to ask questions. So you actually become a ziphite. Because you stir them up, you know. They did what? They did what? Can I make sure they did what? They what? Now, I would think they robbed the store too. Okay, well, you're just as crazy, but you're the ziphite because you're stirring it up. Because you have to validate that. Those scriptures are there to warn us. If you want to be one of those, then the end is damnation. Because people are good at those things. Why well, I didn't know. I thought, well, it doesn't matter what you thought. The example is, you better pray it's true. You know, if you try to say, man, Jesus, I pray he robbed Nick's store. Oh, Father of life, let it be so he's robbing Nick's store. Because you done, you done shot it out that he better be robbing Nick's store. Because if not, you're a false witness. So who would want to pray bad on somebody? See, you can't win with stuff you don't know. Better, better to be fooled than not. Now, I'm not saying you sit in no car while somebody come run out the liquor store. And you don't know why. I'm not saying. I said you saw them. Because there are things that you can ask questions. What are you doing, you know? Why are you running out? You know, you can ask. But don't start saying that. In this abstract example, to keep peace in the Lord's family. I'm telling you, brethren. Don't play with the Lord. David is a very wise man. And that is how he is one of the great examples in the scriptures. And so therefore, now let's look back here again and dig up some more. So Abner is called out on the carpet and he looks like a fool. And so he shows that I've got the sword, i got the spear, i got your, your the deal of water that you used to use. And now Saul is, oh, he's a wonderful guy. Now, uh, you know, and everything is all honky-dory. But the idea is, he says, uh, why are you chase me? What have I done? He says, verse 19, now therefore I pray thee, let my Lord the king hear the words of his servant. If the Lord have stirred thee up, he said, if it's men, he says, okay, then curse be they. So I look at the second part of verse 19. He says, For they have driven me out this day from abiding in the inheritance of the law, saying, Go serve other God. See, they had pushed him so far back to where now he's at the brink of talk, crossing an enemy territory. And at this time, saints didn't do that. They did not do that. Israel was the place you wanted to stay. Or it would be like he's going to be driven so far you have to serve other God. If you go to their land, you're not going to be up in there talking about Jehovah God. What did the Lord say? What nation has changed his God? So you don't go to the Philistine talking about the Most High God. No, you don't. Unless you want your head lifted off your shoulders. So he says, oh, I got to go somewhere. I'm not to serve their God. That's what you're pushing me to do. He says, these people that stirred you up against me. So he says, verse 20, Now therefore, let not my blood fall to the earth before the faith of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a fleet, as when one doth hunt a partridge in a mountain. David said, I'm nothing to you, man. What, what are you coming up to me for anyway? What can I do to you? Verse 21, Then said Saul, I have sinned. 
He's good at saying that, isn't he? Boy, that's like a song to him. You know, like name it. He's good at saying it, but repentance is like a cloud floating away without water. It will be gone soon. And that's what you gotta watch too about people. I'm sorry I sinned. I'm sorry I sinned. Like a song. I'm sorry I sinned. I'm sorry I sinned. Is this a song or are you confessing? Because you don't confess and make repentance and then immediately whoop, back again. It doesn't work like that. There has to be a change shown. And so he says here that uh then said, so I said, return my son David. Follow no more, do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thine eyes this day. Behold, I played the fool, and have erred exceedingly. And David answered and said, Behold, the king's spear, and let one of the young men come over and fetch it. The Lord rendered to every man his righteousness and his faithfulness, for the Lord delivered thee into my hand today. But I would not stretch forth my hand against the Lord's Lord. And behold, as thy life was much set by this day in my eyes, so let my life be much set by in the eyes of the Lord. And let him deliver me out of all tribulation. So see, he says, now notice, notice, he ain't say let my life be set before you. He said to the Lord. Y'all catch what David said. So now he said, okay, your life is set before me. I let you slide. My life is set before the Lord this day. You know what he's saying? He's saying because he's not fixing to say nothing to Saul. He knows Saul's crazy. He lied the last time and he's back after him again. So he's like, man, you're not. He's letting him know, you know, my faith is in God, not you. My faith I'm, is not in pleading with you for my life. I'm putting my life before the Lord and he will protect me. Now, baby, that's how you got to be. When a Saul is after you, I'm telling you now, if you want to make it, you got to make sure to understand, you know, it's not about telling them spare. Let them know the Lord will spare me before you. That's it. See, now that should register if there's any hope to getting the Saul's of life to get back in line. And so what does he say? He says, uh, Then Saul said to David, Blessed be thou, my son David. Thou shalt both do great things, and also shalt still prevail. So David went on his way, and Saul returned to his place. And David, verse 20, chapter 27, verse 1, And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. Okay? There's nothing better for me than I should speedily escape into the land of the Philistines. Now see, now David begins to do what he did with Abigail. He makes a bad call. David's going to have to do some heavy duty stuff here. To hide out with the Philistines. That's what you don't do. I said, well, the Bible didn't say this thing was wrong. The Bible didn't say this thing was wrong when he was going to kill everybody that pissed against the wall in Nabal's place. The Bible never said that this thing was wrong. It just said that's what he said he going to do. The girl told him it's wrong. So we got to understand the Bible doesn't always tell you and this thing was wrong. That's what the Lord got angry with disciples for, brethren. He told them, how long will I be with you? You don't have understanding either? The Lord can't keep telling us things and babies to, here's a little spoon, babies to, at some point the Lord like, man, hell, your business, I told you this is in the chapter, wake up, follow with me. That's what he was telling the disciples, and here we ought to know, this is a bad call. Now you're so afraid, you say, well, Saul going to get me, so you start making shot calls yourself. You've been alive so far, Israel's a pretty big place. You already got folks telling you only behind your back. So why would you run to the enemy's camp? Because I'm scared. Listen, when David ate the shoe bread, you saw no scripture said, and this thing was wrong. But do you see Jesus in Matthew 12? It is against the law. Brethren, keep reading that book and looking over it. And remember the stories. So yeah, it was wrong. Not going to always have something say, hey, it's wrong right there. God will say, okay, you with me? This is a bad call. But I'm going to protect him because he's losing it. He's losing it. And so how are you going to say, how are you going to protect him? And Saul shall despair me, he said, this is his plan, to seek me any more in any coast of Israel, so shall I escape out of his hand. And David rose and he passed over with 600 men that were with him unto a chief, the son of Maor, king of Gath. That's a Philistine king, saints. That's a Philistine king. I hope we know that. Verse 3, and that's no, that's, no, that's no king in Israel other than Saul. This is the Philistine's king. Gath is the land of the Philistines. And David dwelt with Achish at Gath, he and his men, every man with his household. Even David with his two wives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the Carmelitess, Nabal's wife. Now, 
What you have to understand is, is they remember they heard the song, Saul has killed his thousand, David's killed his ten thousand. Okay, word and got back to them. Saul tried to kill this boy. So they kind of halfway trust him. Yeah, we heard about what's going on with you, man. He rolls up in there, makes an alliance, say, look, man, y'all know the story, you know what's going on. I'm, I'm not loved in Israel no more. So he's got to prove it to them. And it was told Saul that David was fled to Gath, and he saw them no more again. And David said to Kish, if I have now found grace in thine eyes, let them give me a place in some town in the country that I may dwell there. For why should thy servant dwell in the royal city with thee? So I told him, I don't even want to live in the city with you, man. It's, it's a royal city. Put, put me in the country somewhere. Then the king gave him Ziklag that day. Well, for Ziklag pertaining unto the king of Judah unto this day. See, that's how I've got, you see Ziklag, and, and when you go to the other king, they got it because it was given to David. And David wasn't going to give it up. So it was for him uh, and it, for his sons after. And the time that David dwelt in the country of the Philistines was a full year and four months. And I go to proof text. It was Philistines. Okay. As we roll it up. And David and his men went up and invaded the Geshurites and the Gezrites and the Amalekites. For those nations were of old and have of the land. So as thou goest to sure even unto the land of Egypt. Okay, so now look here. This is the kind of deal we got here. Uh, we got groups that God don't like anyway. But they also, they don't like the Philistines. And, and, and it's kind of like an interwar thing. So by him killing them, it makes him look good. And so what happens is, he says here, uh, and David said his men went up and invaded these areas, verse 9, and David smote the land, left neither man nor woman alive, and took away the sheep and the oxen and the ass and the camels and the power, and returned and came to Achish. And Achish said, Whither have you made a road today? And David said, Now look what the story is. Now let's see, I'm trying to fool you. Against the south of Judah. You know David not going to attack no Judah. And against the south of Jeremelites. And against the south of the Kenites. The Kenites were always friends with the Jews. Remember the Kenites? Okay. Nah, remember this saint. But he killed some other people. And I'm selling the story. I'm against my people. So what happens now is. And it says. And David. Uh, neither man nor woman alive. To bring tidings to Gat. Saying, lest they should tell on us, saying, so did David, and so will be his matter all the while he dwelt in a country of Philistine. So what you have now is, is <laughs> he has went to a city that is, let me correct this, it's a city that the Philistines have, but it's some people he can kill, Amalekites. It's a whole other nation, Amalekites. But he kills them. But he doesn't let them come and tell the king of Gath. You know, man, David came and attacked us. David wants them to believe that it is of Judah. The area of Judah. The area that he used to be involved with. So it can make him look good before this king. So he can hide out and stay there. But see, you're not going to be able to get this type of thing done forever. Because the people's heart. It's going to swing because they know we got David on our team. Let's go get Judah. See, this is where the problem is going to come in. See, saints, if you're not for real, you can only float that lie so long. And this isn't a lie against God. This is just, you can only front so long before people. Because David doesn't understand, son, you can't run here and front like you with them. Because you can't control where their heart going to go. You can't go to the Methodist church and get in there and speak against what they're doing wrong against the Methodist system. You're not going to be able to go in there and say what the Baptists are wrong for talking against the Methodists. You won't be able to pull that off. Because one day somebody's going to swing their heart against the Lord's church. The Lord's anointed, Jesus Christ, and they're going to say, we're going to debate. <laughs> you coming with us because you used to be with them. You're going to help us debate. Now you're in trouble because you're like, Man, y'all can't defeat them. I came from them. Mm -hmm. They are undefeatable. David, no, if he put his hand on the Israelite, he becomes like Saul. Poison the God and God will let him get snuffed out this time. So, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And so what happens now is, is that this particular group of people, 
They would have came and told on him, man. Your boy ain't for real. Your boy ain't go no Judy. Can't kill our folks up. Amalekites, man. See, so he made sure it wasn't. I see, that's a lot of killing. Make sure it wasn't nobody else. Now, these aren't killings that are evil. These are also enemies against Israel. But the idea is that he, he, he's not killing them for Israel's glory. He's killing them for the Lord's glory. But he's going to attribute that it is for Philistines' glory. That would be like you going to the uh, Billy Graham deal and speaking, you know. And here comes Pastor Graham, you know. You'd be up there, you know. Is this not a great symbol? Like, well, hold on, man. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Now, hold up. You, you're not going to be able to do this. Because one day they're going to come against the Lord's kingdom. So finally, Akish did believe David, saying he had made his people Israel utterly to have over him. Therefore, he shall be my servant forever. Game over. He got it. He got him to believe that he is totally with the Philistines. He's gone to these great men. But remember what he said. You're pushing me. You're pushing me. He said you're pushing me. to I actually did, I should go and serve other gods. What you trying to make me do. Coming after me like this. And see. In a Kishma. Well that's what they're going to think man. I already know they don't like. The, the king don't like. You can't live in a land where the king don't like. He tried to kill you a bunch of times. He, the, the, the story didn't got out. You're over here now. And if he is believed. Did you attack Judah? And you with me. But we're going we're gonna to take this next on chapter 28. It came to pass in those days the Philistines gathered their armies together to warfare. A fight with Israel. And a key said unto David. Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle thou and thy men. And David said to Achis. Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And a key said to David. Therefore. Well, I make the keeper of mine here feel. So they said, okay, now I heard the story. But see, this is a king. Remember, he rules by wisdom. Princes rule by me, wisdom says. So he said, okay, you know, I'm almost sold. But if I see you kill an Israelite, I'm down. You, you, you got my back for life. You're going to be my right hand man. You're going to be elevated. And so, and now Sam was dead, and all Israel had lamented and buried him and Ramah, even his own city. And Saul had put away. Those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. The fifth signs got himself together and came and pitched in Shinnam. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. Now you see David on the wrong team. You see David. Hey, can you go to a debate and you see a saint rise up <laughs> on gospel preaching? No, this brother, no. And he, and he rise up. <laughs> and he said, hey, what the Catholics? Hey, that brother saw us up. I wonder where he went. And when Saul saw the host of fifth signs, he was afraid in his heart. Greatly trouble. And when Saul inquired the law, the Lord answered him not by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul to Sir, Seek me a woman that I familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there's a woman that hath a familiar spirit in Endor. We'll stop it. The famous old witch of Endor. He don't go there. See, because he know this is trouble. They were, he's wondering, you know, they coming against me. They, they, they roll up on me like this. I don't whoop these guys before. Man, you know. This thing ain't finna get deep. He's scared. God not with him. He's tried through the priest. Casting lots and all the things that can be. God said I'm not talking to you. So I'm going to go to the witch. But God told him later I killed him. Because he went to the witch. But somebody would say well you know what God wouldn't answer. He didn't have a charge. You know why I go. Listen this is saints. I'm going to wrap it right here. Listen to me well. Listen to the voice of the Lord. From the word. If the Lord has not. Given you the hand to sin against what he does not want you to do. And you do not have your life in all. Don't go to the witch. Don't go to the palm breeder because he can really kill you then. Mm. See, because you're going to go, they're going to tell you something. That girl going to bring Sam up. He's going to communicate. He's going to look like Sam. And she's going to tell you, no, there's going to be a man in a red shirt. going to come in. He's going to give you, okay, all right, now the Lord. See, now he's but he wouldn't answer me. When he won't answer, when you don't see change, it's time not to ask for forgiveness and change. Not go to the witch. Not go to, never go to the witch. If you're here, you're not a member of the church, then listen to the message. Remember, God loves you. He wants to save, but he can't if you're outside of how he saves. Acts 19, 1 through 5 shows some individuals, 12 of them, who had turned their backs against the queen of Asia, Diana, and had turned their face toward the Lord and had been baptized and waiting on Jesus. Wrong message, wrong teacher. 
And when Saul, and when, when, when Paul, who is Saul of Tarsus, when he teaches them, he lets them know the truth and they're baptized again. That's what you got to do. So if you're listening to this, you got to call a number to be baptized again. You've got to be able to be added to the Lord's church by the Lord Himself. How is that done? If one hears the gospel, believe Jesus died, was buried on the third day, rose again. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He was seen of Cephas and the others in verse 5. And Jesus himself said in Mark 16, 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. When Peter preaches, they ask him in Acts 2, 37, What shall we do? They know, okay, we're done. He's living, but we killed him. Our hearts, our sins are on us. The Old Testament taught. What do we do? Repent and be baptized. Acts 2, 38. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the mission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and unto your children. Unto all that are far Even as men as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words that he testify and encourage them. Save yourselves from this unto all that is perverted generation. Then they that glad to receive his word were baptized the same day. 3,000 added unto them, and they continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, the breaking of bread, and in prayers, and in a fellowship which is to walk in the light of Christ. First John chapter 1 teaches us that. And Acts 2 47, the Lord, not man, asked to the church day that such should be saved. You believe that. In Acts 8, the eunuch is ready, but Philip says there's not enough info given yet. He says, See here, water. What did hinder me to be baptized? Say, if you believe it all your heart, you may. What does he have to believe? I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now he stops the chair. Then he baptized and rejoicing is heard about in the report from Luke. If you believe that, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, Paul says it has to be done that way. Why? For by one spirit, all we all baptized in the one body with a Jew, Gentile, bond friend have all been made to drink into one spirit. You got to do it right, saints, if there's any hope for the Holy Spirit to touch their soul. 1 Peter 3, 21 and 22, the life figure went to even baptism does also now save us. Forget the thief on the cross. Now save us. Not to put in away the filth of the flesh. We know it's not the water. It's the answer of a good conscience to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. This gets his power. And where is he? The right hand of God. He's in heaven. Ruling everything. Angels, authorities, principalities, powers. You name it, he's over it. If you believe that, Jesus gave a promise. Revelation 2.10. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. He says, you have tribulation ten days. See the law for one. He says, be thou faithful unto death and receive everlasting life. That's what we have before us. You can be baptized now. You listen to the message. We'll find someone. Don't say maybe. We know we will find someone to baptize you because God has his children everywhere. If you believe that and you're here now and you've gotten off track, it's not over. You say, we well, you know all this stuff that's never over. Are you still breathing? You can repent. We can pray for you. You say, well, I, I've changed, but I don't have the strength needed to move forward. Then ask for it now. While together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Yeah, oh, so why will you, you linger, wandering from the soul of God? Hear you now the invitation, oh, prepare to meet thy heart. Careless soul, careless soul, oh, heed thy warning, for 